<laughs> the final speaker in the first round is Julia Bryan Wilson. <clears throat> Before I get to the many meanings of the word professionalize, let me also emphasize that there is no such thing as a stable single category of artist. Who are these artists that we're talking about? Are they the barely scraping by practitioners with adjunct teaching jobs on the side to pay the rent in a nation with no state support for the arts? Are they newly graduated art students burdened by debt in a country with robust national funding? Are they village artisans struggling for survival by organizing collectives to protect their local handicrafts? There are so many kinds of activity and so many different identities in so many divergent contexts that one could corral under the rubric of artist that it begins to fray at the seams. Instead of asking a sweeping question like should artists professionalize, let's pay attention to local circumstances and specific histories in which this issue might ramify quite unevenly. When we speak from a space of empire in the 21st century, the question has long ago been answered. Starting in the Renaissance, when art began to define itself as a vocation rather than as a calling, artists have been increasingly professionalized, most notably and precipitously in the 1960s with the rise of the MFA as the terminal degree, grants earmarked only for professional artists, and art school classes routinely taught on professional practices which is not to say that artists shouldn't buck against the trend of packaging themselves for easier consumption, which of course they should. Still, I wanna acknowledge that there is a lot of diversity in this room and many conflicting understandings of how it might be possible to make a living doing your work. If there is a space for art outside the state and the market, following last night's panel, it is, as Deirdre put it, the space of embodiment that is separate from the total administration of everyday life. It's within this space that it also makes sense to redefine professionalism so that it does not denote walking lockstep to the beat of the neoliberal entrepreneurial drum, but rather managing yourself, practicing an ethics of care when you engage with mm. others. We might call this minding your business. And I don't mean business in the white collar sense, but the interrelational ways in which we move through the world. Professionalize has become an overly simplistic catch-all dirty word. <coughs> But no one on our panel is saying that artists should scheme to functionalize art to make a quick buck. As we understood it, the question was not, should artists sell out? Because who's going to agree with that? Nobody. <laughs> but rather, how do you want to acknowledge the circumstances of your own production within a highly compromised economy? Let's be strategic about how we contribute to those structures and be tactical about how we might interrupt or stall its ruthless logic. <coughs> None of us think, by saying yes to this question, that artists should head for the galleries or put on business suits and take their marching orders from corporations. Or if we do, as both Jeff and Candace have pointed out, we take our cues from Canadian conceptualists who professionalized as a kind of drag, humorous, parodic, and incisive ways to reimagine the affiliations between collaborations and ideas of incorporation with all its interestingly absorptive and bodily overtones. Instead of should artists professionalize, we should ask, how should artists profess? Profess, of course, has many meanings. One of them is to declare oneself skilled or expert to assert knowledge. But it also means to lay claim to something falsely, insincerely, or deceptively. I think artists should profess by accepting their expertise as well as their wily ways. I call for the professing of professionalism, <laughs> ironizing and making strange professionalization, turning it upside down to curdle it, to estrange it from itself. Instead of being forced to answer yes or no to this totally false binary, let's reframe the question. Should artists and critics profess what they believe in, be more transparent about the stakes of their making and how they support themselves? Yes. Should artists and critics be self-aware of their own circulation within frameworks of power, of their own implication in larger systems of financialization and self-management? Yes. Should artists advocate for themselves and for social justice more broadly with an understanding that their fights might have some surprising resonance with other questions of inequity? Yes. Should artists also organize with an awareness that they have certain class privileges due to cultural capital? even if that cultural capital does not always easily translate into actual political power or long-term financial security? Yes. Should artists fictionalize rather than financialize? Make shit up, falsify, infiltrate? Yes. Should artists with art school educations be aware that just because they are underpaid does not mean that they are underclass? Yes. Should art historians and critics acknowledge our profound privilege as tastemakers? Yes. 
Should we all take more risks, but all the time acknowledge that the risks we take are not equivalent to many other people's and the risks they live? Yes, thank you.